Hi everyone. This is actually my second try at uh, this video. I ran into some difficulties with the first one, so the result is you're not going to get um, the surprise of a few things, or you're not going to get my reaction of a surprise to certain things. But anyways, let's just get started. So what we have here, um, I figured I would um, talk a little bit about these Yi uh, home cameras. Um, this camera here, um, I recently decommissioned. And why I say that is this is the camera that has been sitting um, underneath my overhang over my porch, uh, observing the front door. And uh, until recently, it was serving that job very, very well. Um, but I retired it once uh, another company started offering a paid version of their cloud service. So for me, what's important when it comes to a IP camera, I know many people have various requirements, um, but for me, the, the element of simplicity is good. So what I prefer in my IP cameras is one, um, actually I prefer if they're ethernet, but they're all wireless these days, so I can't really do anything about that. But what I prefer is a micro SD card for local recording. Uh, motion activated recording and a cloud connection and and a lot of people will say oh you know why are you paying for a cloud connection blah 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 you can set up a server I like the idea of the footage not being on site for a camera that's the simple reason um, and that's what these cameras give you the ability of doing these guys are really cheap I regularly see them on sale for you know thirty or forty dollars a uh, regular price is fifty or sixty but wait for a sale there's always a sale. This is the 1080p version of the home camera and um, it works really well. So I figured uh, since I've decommissioned it I uh, shall take it apart and let's see what's inside it. So let's get started. Now as I as I mentioned um, I recently decommissioned this camera from its regular service. Uh, the reason for that is I've switched to WISE cams. Now I've been using WISE uh, cameras for quite a while. Um, they, uh, they're they awesome little beasts. They actually, um, I find the app is a little more agreeable than this particular one. And their biggest selling point for many people is they offer free um, cloud uh, service. Now the problem with WISE cams <laughs> is the free cloud service is honestly not that useful. What they offer for free is 12 seconds, 12 second clips whenever there's motion, up, uploaded to the cloud, which sounds okay. 12 seconds isn't great. Um, there are many cases where you might, you might have 12 seconds and it won't actually capture what you want captured. But what's more important, to me at least, I get the, ah, there we go, screw number four, is that um, they had a five minute cooling off period. So every time you had, every time you had something happen, um, it wouldn't record any anything more, it wouldn't upload anything more for five minutes, which is pretty useless. If you see something happening, only having the first 12 seconds of it, useless. So these guys, they offer um, a paid cloud connection, and why I like them is the cloud connection was relatively cheap, I think three or four dollars a month, um, but they offered continuous upload, which I really liked. Uh, the problem with continuous upload is uh, after a month, um, I'm lucky I've been an unlimited internet because I ended up using like three or four hundred gigs a month. So let's open this guy up and see what's inside. So um, I'm really impressed by, let me zoom in a bit. I'm really impressed by the construction of this camera. Uh, considering how cheap they are, um, they're built really well. Um, I have to say, the other the other amazing thing about modern technology is how integrated everything has become. Uh, you basically have one SOC that does everything. Um, so what, which one is this? Let's see if we can see it. It is a HI High Silicon 3518. So I'm sure if you look that up, it's a pretty simple little device. Uh, well, not simple, but I mean a pretty common device uh, used for this sort of application. I'll have a look later. When I first opened this thing up, I saw this thing, and I'm like, what the heck is that? Uh, I thought it was at first maybe a heat sink or something, but then I noticed that 
and actually touches these pads here. And then I remembered, oh yeah, this camera has a speaker. <laughs> I forgot it has that feature. So it, it has the microphone so you can hear what's happening, but you can also talk back. I never actually used that feature, so meh, whatever. Let's see how much further we can get into this thing. I don't want to break this. I still want to use it. Uh, I'll mention. I'll mention that later. Oh, you know what? That's how you do it. You actually <laughs> you push it from the lens. So there we go. All right. So what we have in here? Oh yeah, and this is just something that wraps around light pipe. First time I saw them, I thought it was just some scrap from some other work I had been doing. Anyways. So here's the Wi-Fi antenna. Um, these things have actually surprisingly good connection to Wi-Fi. It's only 2.4 gigahertz, like most of these sorts of things. Not a surprise. Uh, and this is the Wi-Fi module. Um, this is pretty common these days where you have these castellations. So it's a, it's a module board with these castellated ends that solder onto the main board. So nothing really fancy there. Now... Um, if you look carefully, you can see here, I'll zoom in again on this. So what's interesting here is you see this box here with some wires going to it. That brings up some, some an in, interesting part. So a lot of these cameras are advertised as having night vision, okay? Now, please don't think that a $30 camera from Amazon is going to have the kind of night vision you see police helicopters and military uh, people have. That's a different kind of night vision. What those devices uh, respond to is, is thermal IR, thermal infrared. So they can actually see your body heat, which makes them extremely useful for certain situations. Um, night vision in cameras like this do not see body heat. What they do see is something called near IR. Now, an interesting aspect, and you can go into the physics of this, which I won't, <laughs> lucky, um, is that silicon, which is what most of our modern technology is made out of on the electronics side of things, um, has a, a sensitivity to certain wavelengths of light. All right? And uh, obviously, since this thing and many other camera sensors out there are made from silicon, they respond to visual wavelengths. But what you probably don't know, or some of you may not know, is that silicon is actually very sensitive to near IR. What is near IR? Well, think of it as a redder kind of red. So if you look at a rainbow, right, and you see there's green, yellow, orange, red, if you were able to see near IR, below the red band, you would see another band, and the color is undefined to us because we can't see it. Um, color is a human concept, um, consequence of our biology, but um, you would see a near IR band. And silicon is very sensitive to near IR. It's actually more sensitive to near IR than uh, the visual wavelengths. Now, why does this matter? Well, what I'm going to show here is a picture of what happens if you had a silicon sensor that could see near IR along with regular colors. A regular color sensor, silicon-based sensor, uh, has red, green, and blue filters uh, across the whole sensor in a certain pattern, the most common being a Bayer pattern, it's called. What this all, all this means is that each and every pixel on the sensor is covered by a filter of a certain color, and the distribution of those colors differs, but every pixel has a blue, green, or red filter over it. Now, if you took that sensor as it is, put those filters on top of it, and took a picture, you would see this, which looks weird, right? The reason is, what this image captured, aside from a red, blue, and green, is it also captured near IR, and there's quite a lot of it, especially if that big flaming ball of fusion in the sky called the sun is involved. So every camera that you have used, most likely, has what's called a hot mirror. What's a hot mirror? Very simply, it is a filter that filters out or reflects back, 
doesn't really matter which, um, near IR. So it only passes what we humans consider visual wavelengths. And that is what is in this box. What do I mean about in this box? So this camera normally has a hot mirror in the optical path, all right, which reflects near IR out or absorbs it. I don't know which one. It doesn't really matter. And for daylight photography, for daylight imaging, that's perfect. That gives you wonderful color pictures. Uh, this camera actually has quite nice image quality. At night, though, if you think about it, where light levels are low, you're throwing away some of the light coming into this camera. Now, it's light we can't see. We humans cannot see. But this camera can't. So why throw it away? Well, because it messes up colors. But at night, at low light levels, humans don't care about colors. If you think about when it's really dark outside and you're looking around, chances are your color perception is really poor. And the reason is our eyes, the color perception in our eyes is op is, is not that great in low light levels. Our, our intensity sensitivity is much um, is much more sensitive than our color sensitivity and I can go a long way into video codecs and all that stuff but I won't anyways the point is we as humans expect that when it's dark out when it's dim out we're not going to see colors very well so what these cameras do to get better night vision as it's called is they have a box here with a solenoid and when it gets dark out, when the light level drops below a certain level, it withdraws the hot mirror from the optical path. So the sensor is now exposed to all visual wavelengths along with near IR. Cameras in this mode will switch to a black and white mode. They won't bother trying to give us color anymore. There's no point. It would be, oops, it would be, well, as that prior image showed, it wouldn't be very useful. But it does give a much brighter picture than you would with a mirror in place. Which goes to these LEDs. What are these? These are near IR LEDs. If they were powered right now, and you were personally looking at them, you would see nothing. Or if you looked really close, you might see a very, very dim, dark red glow. In near IR though, they would be extremely bright. In fact, this camera that I'm using to record, has a hot IR mirror, uh, has a hot mirror in it. But these LEDs would be so bright that you would see them. And in fact, that's a trick you can use to see if your TV remote works. Point it at a camera. Chances are it'll look purple or red, but it will light up. Your eyes won't see it, but your camera will. And that's what these are. So when the hot mirror is, with, is withdrawn and there isn't much light out, these LEDs light up and illuminate the scene. So aside from the additional low light sensitivity you get from withdrawing the hot mirror, this camera will also illuminate the scene. And it'll be an illumination that we humans cannot see, which is quite beneficial for a security camera, which is why they do it. Um, the distinguishing feature of this box is the click that you hear. So if you have a camera like this, it doesn't have to be this one. Almost every cam webcam like this works this way. Um, if it's bright, if it's a brighter scene and you put your hand over it, you might hear a click. What that click is, is the hot mirror being withdrawn or put into the optical path. All right, it's a long description, but I'm hoping maybe that was useful. Uh, other features of this, um, again, I'm really impressed with the build quality. Uh, curious fact is that the mirror, the uh, the front element of this lens is concave. I've never actually seen that before. I don't quite know why that is. But anyways, um, there is the micro SD cards, uh, micro USB um, connector. Uh, there's the microphone and here's the micro SD slot. So, uh, I'm not gonna take this apart any further. And the reason is, I still want to use these guys. I'm not going to use them for their, uh, this guy, I'm not going to use them, use it for its original purpose. But um, a problem with these that a lot of people have is that uh, you have to use the app to use them. And um, if I had to use the app to use them, I wouldn't be 
as concerned about uh, breaking them, breaking it or anything like that. That said, um, there's a hack that enables RTSP on these cameras. Um, it's not free. Uh, I found free versions of it. It didn't work well. So I, I, I went with the paid version. It's five British pounds. Comes out to seven or nine dollars. A lot of seven dollars Canadian, uh, sorry, seven dollars, uh, American, uh, rough, roughly nine dollars Canadian. A lot of people say you're spending nine bucks on a camera that cost you 35. Yeah, but I consider this a hobby. Um, so what I might do is integrate this into my ZoneMinder system. I don't know where yet. I haven't decided, but um, anyways. Um, back to the box. Um, these guys do come with a mount, which is quite nice, actually. It's, 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 um, I was going to say it's metal, but, uh, no. I, huh, thought it was metal. It's actually plastic. <laughs> doesn't matter but it's a nice mount uh, the camera fits in there and uh, works quite well they are designed for indoors but if you have them outdoors and you keep them dry they work great this guy was out outside for probably a year year and a half in the Canadian winter um, you know minus 30 minus 40 degrees maybe uh, worked fine no problems at all Just don't let them get wet. So yeah, I uh, highly recommend these. They're great little guys. If you have any questions or any comments, uh, feel free to let me know. Thanks for watching. Till next time.